My name is Celia Ann, I'm a South African seamstress and welcome to my very first sewing tutorial. The timestamps for each step will be linked, so please make use of those if you want to skip to any specific step. Let's sew! We need to take three measurements, our bust, waist and hips. My bust is 34, my waist 29 and hips 37. As you can see that's quite random and it's falling in between sizes but that doesn't matter because we're going to be looking at the finished garment measurements and see how much ease we want in the garment. If you're making version B, have a look at the high hip measurement because that's round about where the start of your gathers is going to fall at the end of your bodice. The fabric requirements for your view and your size is listed at the top of page 4. Seam allowances vary from company to company so you need to make sure that you are aware of what your pattern uses. This pattern uses a seam allowance of 1 cm or 3 8 inch and a hem allowance of 3 cm or 1 and a quarter inch. You will need any light to medium weight woven dress fabric. I'm using viscose for both version A and B. This one is for version A. You will also need pins and your dressmaker's shears or a rotary cutter mat and weights. I'm using this slight to medium weight cotton interfacing which I love. Any lightweight interfacing will be perfect. You will need a buttonhole foot attachment. Some buttons, version A calls for 7, version B calls for 8. You will need thread that matches your project. Any type of marking tool that you prefer, this is a friction pen. I find it all very useful, especially when I'm doing gathers. And any little ruler to keep with you at the ironing board. This one has these handy little tools on the ends. You also need your sewing machine and a size 80 universal sewing needle as well as your iron, ironing board and if you have it, a tailor's ham and sleeve roll. Let's move on to our pattern pieces. I have traced all of my pattern pieces and I've put all the markings on it as well as the grain line and all of the information so that I know exactly what piece it is and how many I need to cut out. You can either use your cutting mat, your rotary cutter and your weights or you can use your pins and your fabric shears. I've ironed my fabric with the selvages together as well as the right sides facing each other. We are now going to take our pattern pieces and line up the grain line. This is very important. We're going to make it parallel with the selvages of our fabric. So I'm taking a ruler and I am measuring from one point of the grain line to the fabric edge. Now I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same thing and make sure it measures the same distance. Something to always be aware of is that they don't ever cut your fabric straight at the fabric store. So you need to make sure that your selvages are together, not the cut edge and often the cut edge as you can see will be very skew so you need to make sure that your pattern is actually catching both layers. I prefer cutting with my palm facing away from the pattern piece, either way is fine. That was with my palm facing away, now I'll show you how it is with my palm facing towards the pattern piece. I'm going to have to lift up the pattern piece, especially around corners. Very 
very importantly, I'm now going to clip my notches. The front has always got one notch. And the back has always got two notches. This we are not going to clip, it's the waistline marking. I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to transfer your markings from your pattern onto your fabric. So as you can see, I'm placing my pattern down, but it's on the cut edge, so I'm checking does it catch both layers of fabric. Let me move it down a bit. Now your pattern piece is going to be cut out. I'm just doing a quick demonstration. You're going to place a pin at the marking and then on the wrong sides of your fabric, you're going to mark it with either chalk or a water soluble pin or a friction pin. Moving on to the sieve piece, we are going to look at the slash line. We're going to be cutting it on the pattern, not on the fabric. I'm using a water soluble pen with this one just because it's going to show up really bright on this fabric. We're going to be doing the same thing with pleat markings. The first step is to interface our button bands as well as our sleeve cuffs. We're going to be interfacing the side with the notch. The steam is switched off on my iron. We're going to be pressing down for about 5 to 7 seconds. And we are not ironing, we are pressing. Now for version B I've done the sleeve cuffs as well and I've gone and clipped those notches again to make it clearer to see. I decided to use this navy thread because it will show up better on screen. And here we are sewing at last. So we're going to be determining what is our 6mm seam allowance. So on my machine you will see Mine falls right in that little groove. We are going to be stay stitching from the shoulder seam down, our 6mm seam allowance. I'm back stitching because the stitching is going to be staying in the garment, so that's fine. We want to be slightly pushing it towards the machine, not pulling it down, because we don't want to stretch out the neckline. Now for the back neckline, we're going to be doing it from the shoulder seam down towards the middle and then flip it around and from the shoulder seam down towards the middle again. Let's take our left front piece, you'll see the wider part is the top and you'll see the button band side has got that little notch. We're going to be taking our side piece, you'll see there's double notches for the back and a single notch for the front. So we're going to be taking the single notch side and putting it towards our front, that's the armhole up there. Pin the top and then the bottom. And then we're going to find that notch and pin it. Now 
we are sewing this at our one centimeter seam allowance. You're welcome to finish off your seam now but I like to sew all four seams first and then just finish it all at the same time. This is our back piece and we are taking the side piece we just sewed onto the front and there's our double notches for the back and our double notches. We're going to be pinning those together either side. I'm going to find those notches, pin them together and then pin in between. Now that all four of my seams are done, I'm going to go over to the overlocker and finish them off. No worries if you don't have an overlocker, because you can do a zigzag on your sewing machine. I like to put the width at about three and the length at about two and a half. And then I'm going to select the zigzag. Trim your seam allowance in half. As you can see, I'm ever so slightly out of practice with this, but as you can also see, this is not going to fray beyond the stitching. Let's press our side seams away from the side panels. Looking at the markings at the top of our back piece, we're going to be doing two rows of gathering stitches. Your longest stitch length, we're going to be doing them six millimeters apart and not back stitching. We're going to be making the back fit to the back yoke, so we're going to pin either side of it. Then we're going to take the bobbin thread and secure it on the needle so we're ready to gather. Let's take the bobbin threads on the other side and start gathering up the fabric so that it matches the back yoke. I'm going to secure it onto the pin and start evening out the gathers. Our stitching is going to fall between the lines. You 
you can pull out your gathering stitches now, bobbin threads first. Let's attach the front yokes. We're going to take the front piece. The button bands on this side, you'll see there's that little notch. That's the armhole. Make sure you've got your neckline facing the right way and we're going to be placing them right sides together. When you are pressing the seams towards the yolks, make sure you steam the gathering lightly and don't crush it. You'll notice there's a slight difference in length between your front and your back shoulder pieces. So we're going to be pinning the top of the shoulder and then we're going to be matching the other side and then simply ease in the extra length. Take your neckband piece and press it in half with the wrong sides facing each other. Now take those raw edges and line it up with the raw edge of your neckline. The pattern says to stitch it at a 6mm seam allowance, but I'm stitching it at the edge of my foot. I just want to make sure that I'm going to be catching the stay stitching in the seam allowance and it's not going to be visible. As you sew on your neckband, you're going to pull it ever so slightly just to make sure that it's sitting nice and snug on your neckline. Let's press the seam allowances towards the neckband. We're going to understitch as close to the edge as possible. Let's trim those edges. To 
help your neck band to lie flatter, you can snip the seam allowances right at the stitching, not through the stitching. That just releases some of the tension and bulk. Fold your neckband over so that the stay stitching is slightly towards the inside of your garment. I just like to quickly pin it to my tailor's ham. As an extra note, I'm using glass head pins because that doesn't melt under the iron. And then we're going to press it flat. Now let's pin it and make sure that we are catching the pin onto the neckband so we know where to stitch. button bands we're going to be stitching a basting stitch at just short of one centimeter seam allowance. Using the stitching as a guide we're going to be pressing it up making sure that the stitching falls just inside of the seam allowance. Taking our bodice front and our button band pieces, we are going to be finding the notches and placing them together. It's going to overlap at the top. I like to take a moment and just make sure that they are matching, so I take the yoke seams and make sure they are matching, and then the top of the button bands, make sure that the bodices are matching. Take the button stand overlap at the top and fold it right sides together. Now if you are going to top stitch you can line it straight up. If you're going to stitch in the ditch you need to overlap it ever so slightly. Following along with the neckline we're going to be stitching straight across. Turn the ends out now using your preferred tool. Mm. 
I will be showing you both the traditional and my favorite way of securing the button band. I'm using fusible hem tape, so I'm placing the tape within the seam allowance and then pressing it. This is the traditional way where we will be pressing the button band in half and pinning it. top stitch or stitch in the ditch, I prefer top stitching. Let's match up the top of our button bands and make sure they line nicely together before we baste the end. Moving on to skirt A, we're going to be pinning the side seams, sewing them together and finishing off the edges. We're going to be doing this for both the top and the bottom skirt pieces. Press the seams towards the back, but remember if you used a friction pin for your markings, please place a pin there now because the iron is going to take away those markings. Doing the same two rows of gathering stitches we did for the top back, we're going to be doing on both skirt pieces at the top between the markings. As a reminder, these stitches are done on your longest stitch length with no back stitching, leave a nice long tail together and make your stitching lines 6 millimeters apart. The first line 6 millimeters from the raw edge and the second line 6 millimeters from the first line. You're about to do a lot of gathering, so stop what you're doing and go and get your favorite beverage of choice. As well as a snack, make that double if you're doing version A. I like to find the center of my skirt, so I place the ends together and make a little notch. Starting by pinning the side seams, we are going to pin 
the top of the bottom skirt to the bottom of the top skirt, right sides together. It will also be very easy now to match the centers of both skirt pieces with the notches we made. Taking the bobbin threads, we are going to gather the pieces so that they match in length, secure the bobbin thread and then even out your gathers. Stitch between your gathering lines at 1 cm seam allowance. exactly the same only with one skirt piece. Pinning, sewing, finishing the edges and pressing the side seams of the skirt and then doing two rows of gathering stitches. on for both view A and view B we're going to be pinning the skirt pieces to the bodice. Find the centers, place them together, find the sides, place them together and we're going to be gathering in between. Taking your bobbin threads you're going to be pulling the gathers until the skirt piece matches the bodice piece. Then we're going to secure the threads onto the pin and even out the gathers. Let's reinforce the slash line on our sleeve before we cut it. towards the slash line. Secure it by basting it in place. Now we are going to cut that slash line to the point of the stitching but not through the stitching.
take your sleeve binding pieces and measuring 6 mm from either side, fold it over and press. Keep the steam off on your iron so that you don't burn yourself. Then we are going to press this in half. Find the center of your binding and then put that right sides together to the center of your slash line. This is not going to completely fit on the raw edge, so match the raw edges on the ends and then taper it down. When you are stitching it, make sure that you catch the stitching that we made for the slash line reinforcement within the seam allowance. We are stitching this at a 6mm seam allowance which should fall right in the crease of the bias binding that we folded. down or fuse it with fusible hem tape to keep it in place. Fold your binding in half and with the inside facing you, stitch the top fold of the binding at a 45 degree angle. We are now going to sew two lines of gathering stitches for the sleeve cap 6mm apart between the markings. Pin, sew and finish your sleeve seam. Press the uninterfaced side of your sleeve cuffs 1 cm. Fold your sleeve binding in on the side of your sleeve pleat. Matching the notch on your cuff with your sleeve seam, we are going to pin the sleeve cuff to the sleeve right sides together. It's going to overlap on each end by one centimeter.
Remove your pleat basting stitches. Fold the ends of your cuffs right sides together and stitch the ends. Remember, if you want to stitch in the ditch, slightly overlap this. If you want to top stitch, you can match these edges. I am top stitching, so I am matching the pressed line with the seam line. You can get fancy tools for this, but I just use my folded up press cloth to help my machine get over the bulky beginning. Let's set in those sleeves. We're going to start by putting them right sides together and matching the shoulder notch with the shoulder seam. Remember the double notches of the sleeve is towards the back. The sleeve seam is matched with the notch at the center of the bodice side panel. Grab those bobbin threads and we're going to be gathering the piece between the shoulder notch and the marking. Sewing at a 1cm seam allowance and a normal stitch length, we will be sewing between the two gathering lines. Don't worry about what the fabric is doing anywhere else on the sleeve, just make sure you are paying attention to your seam line where the stitches are falling and make sure there's no folds or tucks there. Fold the hem of your skirt by 5mm and then again by 2.5cm. Pin and sew from the right side. 
I'm sewing it just short of the 2.5 centimeters that we folded up to make sure that I'm catching it or you can sew it at the 2.5 centimeters and adjust the position of your needle. Taking the buttonhole template for your size, you can either pin the ends of the buttonhole and mark it with your marker. Or what I like to do is take a little craft knife and cut out each buttonhole. This makes marking the buttonholes very quick and easy. Every machine is different, so please consult your owner's manual for how to do buttonholes on your machine. I will be demonstrating how to do an automatic buttonhole on my Singer Heavy Duty machine. This is optional, but I like to use this fray stop liquid on my buttonholes. To cut your buttonholes, you can either use a self healing mat and a buttonhole cutter, or you can use a pin and a seam ripper. To easily mark where your buttons should go, I like to place the wrong sides of the button bands together and place pins to make my button markings. When it comes to the bottom one, I just like to lay the markings over the buttonholes and then mark the last one. At the back of your button foot, there is a little groove that fits a pin. This pin is going to give some extra space in our stitching for our buttons to move. This allows some room for the button band with the buttonholes to fit underneath your button. It is important to put your stitch length on naught. We are going to be selecting a zigzag. We will be adjusting the width of the stitch to fit our button later. Place your button on the marking we made for the button and put it underneath your foot. Adjusting the width of the zigzag Put your needle in to hold it in place. Now lift up your foot and place the pin in the groove. Very carefully hand crank your needle to make sure that your zigzag size is correct for your button.
Once you are assured of this, you can go ahead and put your foot down and put about 10 stitches in there. Take the end you just cut off and slightly pull it and you will see a little loop appear. Now pull that towards the back. Snip off the beginning threads at the front and the back and tie off the end threads. Do the same for the buttonhole and the button on your sleeve cuffs and you are done!